Hello, I'm Ben Riddell, and in this presentation, I will explore the literacy framework of Minneapolis Public Schools. First, let's start by providing the context. I will do this by comparing MPS to the state as a whole along the lines of enrollment, race and ethnicity, socioeconomic profile, and reading development and proficiency data. I want to also note that I am citing sources at the bottom of each page to show where my information is coming from. Here is MPS total enrollment, captured between 1988 and 2016. Current enrollment is roughly 35,000 students. Graph of MPS student population broken down by ethnicity. The largest percentage of students are African American, then white American, with Hispanic American, Asian American, and Native American students composing the remainder of the student population. None of the ethnicity for Minnesota as a whole. This shows the relative racial diversity of MPS compared to the public schools of the state. The graph shows the socioeconomic profile of MPS indicated by eligibility for free and reduced price lunch. Notice 62% of the MPS student body is eligible for free and reduced lunches, while only 38% of Minnesota students are eligible. This shows that the student body of MPS is relatively worse off economically than the entire Minnesota state student body data help to inform this graph comparing MPS to Minnesota in MCA test scores. Note the relative better performance of Minnesota as a whole to Minneapolis as a district. On to the literacy framework of MPS. In this section I'll provide an overview of the balanced literacy approach as defined by the district, the role of assessment, support for advanced and struggling readers, how individual schools execute the balanced literacy approach of the district, and finally, an analysis of MCA testing data. For MPS Elementary Literacy Framework, note the important aspects as defined by the district. I have bolded certain terms for emphasis, such as balanced literacy approach, readers and writers workshop, standards-based elementary students, language skills block, target specific language skills. It can be helpful to refer now to the balanced literacy approach as advocated by Presley in the text we read for this course. To quote my group's midterm, summarizing Presley's work, from the meaning emphasis approach, balanced literacy promotes student engagement in extensive practice in reading, writing, and discussing meaningful literature. From the skills-based approach, balanced literacy promotes early and explicit decoding instruction coupled with explicit comprehension strategies. We'll see the degree to which these two approaches interact in the next slide on instructional approaches. In the text, Key Components of Reading Instruction, published by Minneapolis Public Schools, the discussion revolves around a reader's workshop, whole language or meaning-based approach, and scientifically-based re reading research or skills-based approach. Each framework entails different instructional strategies to support readers. For the reader's workshop, they focus on interaction with text, collaborative oral language development, emphasis on meaning making, with instructional strategies such as reading aloud, thinking aloud, shared reading, guided reading, and independent reading. For the scientifically based reading research skills based approach, the focus is phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Instructional strategies include phonemic manipulation and isolation, explicit systematic phonics in a logical sequence, reading at different levels, and direct and indirect vocabulary learning. In a discussion with Kathy Gresh, a literacy specialist at Anderson, we discussed improvements to balanced literacy that MPS hopes to achieve by transitioning to a new district-wide curriculum. First, the old curriculum, according to Gresh, was balanced but separate. It was the incorporation of both meaning-based and skills-based approaches, but through separate curricula that were not integrated. With the new curriculum, Gresh hopes that the district will improve literacy instruction with a truly integrated, balanced approach that teaches skills in high-interest, text-rich context that supports the development of content knowledge. Although Gresh realizes that curriculum is just a tool and that teachers bring life to the curriculum, Still, she, hopes, she is hopeful that the transition to the new curriculum will support teachers and students towards a more integrated, balanced approach. Here's an action plan listed on the MPS website outlining the reading approach to secondary reading. In a discussion with 8th grade te ELA teacher Teresa Gloppin at Anderson, the literacy framework outlined in the elementary, balanced reading approach was not as prominent in middle school. 
Instead, Teresa pointed to the MPS position that all secondary teachers were teachers, teachers of literacy and that students were expected to be able to use literacy skills to gain content knowledge in the various disciplines. Transitioning now to literacy assessment, the MPS published text, Key Components of Literacy Assessment, emphasizes the interaction and importance of literacy assessment, rigorous instruction, and content standards. It is the interrelation of these three important concepts that leads to a robust literacy framework. MPS views assessment as purposeful action designed to gather meaningful information. First, assessment should support instruction and improve learning. Teachers need to engage in formative assessment to address student needs in terms of identifying instructional levels, monitoring student progress, and differentiating instruction. Next, assessment should ensure that instruction aligns with content standards. Finally, assessment should aid in communication between teacher and student, teacher and families, and among professionals in the district. Here are the types of assessment that MPS proposes in their key components of literacy assessment. Literacy interventionist Jill Nelson discussed the importance of diagnostic assessments and progress monitoring assessments in our conversation on identification and support of struggling readers. Once identified, progress monitoring assessments were used to make decisions on the level of support students needed for further instruction. Teresa Gottlopin, 8th grade ELA teacher, discussed how in middle school, benchmark assessments serve to identify struggling readers. Although assessment serves a variety of functions in the literacy framework, certainly one important area is monitoring the success of students and their development as readers. Most of the information I gained about struggling and advanced readers came from my interviews with reading interventionist Jill Nelson and 8th grade ELA teacher Teresa Gloffin. After assessing struggling readers, Jill discussed her small group interventions, which involved teaching a supplemental curriculum called Leveled Literacy and frequent progress monitoring. While the specifics of this intervention program may not be consistent district-wide, still the general framework of additional small group skill-based support for struggling readers seems to be the district approach. Teresa echoes these strategies and we can hear her comments. There's like a lot of fluency reading interventions that people that support me and Anderson actually have given me, but comprehension I think is like a harder one for us to know how to support at an intervention level because it's so dependent on like student interest and like the text topic and the um, you know genre of writing it all adds these additional layers that then can make comprehension either like easier or more of a challenge. Gotcha. Okay. I was unable to gain much information from MPS on the support of advanced readers, although I understand their ed identification follows the same general frameworks as struggling readers. In terms of individual schools, Minneapolis is a diverse district. The various student bodies have diverse cultural and experiential backgrounds. Kathy Gretsch, literacy specialist, noted that it is her role to bring district policy to her building, to engage with teachers in a discussion on how to enact the policy. It is not necessarily the case that adoption in one school is the same as adoption in another. From my interviews, I've gained the sense that MPS respects teacher autonomy to a high degree but puts in place checks and supports to ensure that teachers are aligned with the broader literacy framework. In that sense, it seems that there is some variation among schools, though all schools align to the overall framework. In the next section, I'm going to show MCA reading data for the district analyzed in a few different ways. Here is the district overall performance as compared to the performance of Minnesota as a state. Here, you can see MCA reading data for ethnic and racial subgroups compared to the state as a whole. Notice that white students attending Minneapolis public schools are outperforming the state as a whole while all other subcategories are underperforming. Here's the same MCA data, this time reanalyzed according to various subgroups. Notice that the non-free and reduced lunch students perform at par with the state while all other subgroups underperform relative to the state. And here we have free and reduced lunch, non-special ed, special ed, non-ELL, ELL. Here we see that in MPS, some schools demonstrate increases in overall reading proficiency, while other schools demonstrate decreases in overall reading proficiency. After gathering the above data, I will now provide reflection and analysis of the following points. The face of the district literacy policy is as it appears on the MPS literacy website. It is research-driven, equitable, and ultimately designed to prepare students for higher order thinking. 
In reality, the K5 curriculum transition that MPS is undergoing shows the degree to which MPS is attempting to move closer to best practice in balanced literacy. Although there may be hiccups in implementation, it is my understanding that MPS is taking steps to move more closely, uh, more closely align itself with balanced literacy as outlined by Presley. In terms of equity, although MPS may be striving for equity, MCA data shows that there are significant discrepancies among ethnic and socioeconomic groups, and the degree to which they benefit from instruction. It seems that this is MPS's most important challenge for improving literacy instruction. While MPS claims that it is preparing students for higher order thinking, still reading intervention is primarily focused on skills improvement, especially fluency. I don't think that this is a disconnect or a misalignment, but rather the reality that while MPS values and seeks to develop higher order thinking, much investment in time and resources are allocated to supporting struggling readers with basic proficiency skills. Does the literacy framework address the needs of MPS students? I think the literacy framework is attempting to meet the skills of a diverse body of students. While many students' needs are being met, still a significant portion of the student body, especially diverse learners and students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, needs are not being met to the degree that will allow them to be proficient at grade level. In terms of the district priorities, it is clear that the district emphasizes the balanced literacy approach. There's a wealth of literature and research about balanced literacy and its implementation in MPS. Elementary literacy is also an emphasis. While pages and pages of information are available to address K-5 policy, there are relatively less guidelines about middle and high school literacy. And my interview with Teresa Glopin, E, uh, eighth grade ELA teacher supports this analysis. Finally, MPS devotes a great deal of resources toward the identification and support of struggling readers, especially with skills-based approaches. These aspects of literacy are certainly prominent in an evaluation of literacy at MPS. Recommendations, number one, based on MCA data and the research presented in David O'Brien's lecture, Text Complexity and Accessibility, a recommendation for MPS would be to integrate cultural responsiveness into the literacy framework. MPS has a great diversity of students, and a more culturally responsive approach could lead to greater accessibility of text, which could activate students' background knowledge and lead toward higher engagement and motivation for stronger comprehension. Next, I recommend a disciplinary subject matter emphasis for middle and secondary readers. Based on the evaluation of Gambrel and Morrow, research states that helping students improve comprehension of content area text requires significant scaffolding. Based on my analysis, while MPS recognizes the need for content teachers to provide that scaffolding, it seems that additional attention and support to this area of literacy could lead to significant gains. Last, based on my interviews, I understood that students were engaging in interventions that were designed to support reading fluency. While support of reading fluency is an important goal, based on the analysis of Gambrel and Morrow, comprehension interventions lead to larger gains for older struggling readers. If high investment authentic learning events are included as part of the interventions, students are more likely to benefit from the instruction. Finally, I will conclude by discussing my focus for the remainder of the Reading Licensure Program coursework. I am an ESL teacher and I support ELA in eighth grade. I want to develop a diverse repertoire of best practice for developing academic language of diverse learners through culturally relevant reading and writing scaffolding. Finally, thank you for all of the interesting reading and instruction that we've had throughout this course. It's been very enlightening to me, as has been this assignment. I really enjoyed it. Um, I want to apologize for going over my time limit, uh, but indeed, thank you so much. and. Uh, I appreciate all of your help.